Philip Spall is dead. So when did you find out? Um, a policeman came to see me in my office. Kestrel oil trading are being investigated by a journalist, Jamil Khan. Jamil, what? Well, it doesn't surprise me. They have secrets. Of course they do. It's how they work. The missing computer. What exactly was on it? After I saw Martin, I noticed this, this car. Lucy Wilson said she was being followed before she was killed. She wasn't sweet, Martin. She was professional. You my only hope. John Slater, he knew me. He knew about my drug conviction. I put the gun down and I took the money. So you saw him? No. I've just been going through the John Slater file. The solicitors that defended him, they're a firm based here in Ipswich. And? The barrister that defended Philip Spall also works there. Small world, eh? Travers. I made you some tea. Look, well, Maggie, what happened the other night? I'm sorry, OK? I... You've got to understand, what you did, it... it really pissed me off. I mean, getting done for shoplifting. How stupid was that? You hit me. I said I'm sorry. I didn't know what I was doing. Let's go out tonight, have a drink. We go down the George. I can't go out looking like this. You don't look too bad. You could put on some glasses, no one will notice. I don't want to go out. Yeah, you do. Come on. We need to talk about things. I know I've got a temper. I just... You know, it's the job. I just get so stressed, you know? You said you'd been with another woman. I was lying. I just wanted to upset you. Look, can we talk about this later? I've got to go. Uh, I'll get home early and we'll have a nice chat, OK? I'll make everything all right. Look, yeah. Why don't you go out and get yourself something nice? I still can't believe it. Lucy, I'm dead. How well did you know her? I'd only known her for about three months. The same amount of time she was working with Kestrel? Yes. You put her there, she was working for you. She was helping me with a story. What story? Well, I'd prefer not to talk about that. Fine, let me help you. You've been investigating the illegal dumping of toxic waste in Eritrea. Someone buys dirty fuel, they wash it, they sell it on for a higher price. 
but they're a byproduct, aren't they? The process is called caustic washing. And you think Kestrel are the dealers? I've been trying to find the link, yes. So you sent Lucy in? Yes. Did you tell her to sleep with Martin Newell? I knew nothing about that. You knew her history. You didn't care how she got hold of her information or what kind of danger she might be in. People are dying, Mr. Travers. Women and children. In Ginda, Karen and Arota now. I've seen the corpses. This stuff, this waste product is killing them. There are three dates on Lucy's Blackberry. In January, April, and July, and a name, Agadir. Does that mean anything to you? In Morocco? No, I've, I've never been there. And she didn't text it to you? I didn't hear from her. This came from the Nautical Records Office. It might help. His name was Alan. He was 17 years old and he had talent. What a waste. I wonder, what really scares me is, I wonder if I was partly responsible. For him killing himself? But why? <laughs> the business with the book. You were trying to help him. Was I? Or, or, or was I trying to exploit him? You know, uh, a young offender makes good. Would have made a great story for the bookseller. Maybe I just added to whatever pressure he was feeling. <sighs> We're going back to London. You're leaving Suffolk? Yep. As soon as the case is over, I'm going to put the house back on the market. And Will's agreed? Absolutely. Well, I think that's wonderful. You're taking my advice, that's a first. I'm going back to my old job. It's all sorted. And what about Will? He's fine. He's, ah, oh, he's back to his old self. He's completely his old self. I don't know what's happened. It's obvious, isn't it? It's sport. Sport started all of this. It nearly destroyed us. Exactly. And now he's dead. That's what's made the difference, can't you see? Maybe you're right. It's just I didn't see it that way. It's because you're too kind-hearted, darling. I'll tell you what, though. If I'd known it was going to help this much, I'd have shot him myself. You ready? I think so. How about you? Good. This is all so horrible. I just want it to be over with. Don't worry. It will be over very soon. Let's go then. Oh, um, Martin, there is just one other thing. Have you ever had any dealings in Eritrea? Masawa, for example, for Castro? No. We don't even have any contacts there. Are you quite sure? Well, no one's ever mentioned anything to me. All right, very good. Deep breath now. Mm -hmm. So what's happening with Slater? Oh, he can go. Oh, well, we're not charging him. Of course we're charging him. Possession and sale of an illegal firearm. Just not yet. So where does that leave us? I mean, if you can't identify the man he sold it to, we've got nowhere else to go. Well, I'll give him a day or two to think about it, and maybe he'll change his mind. What do you mean? Well, it's funny how 
Little details can come back to you, given the right incentives. In the next few days, you may hear many strange and wonderful versions of the events surrounding the death of a young woman in a London hotel room. But the facts in this case could hardly be more straightforward. Two people went into that room. The defendant was one of them, a man who was having sexual relations with a girl less than half his age. Nobody else was there, and two hours later, the girl was dead. The police have the murder weapon, one of the victim's own stockings, and they will show you DNA evidence that it was handled by one man, Martin Newell. Miss Wilson went into that hotel room with one purpose, to extort money from Martin Newell by blackmailing him about their affair. And that is why he killed her, to silence her. A word. Three pillars of the prosecution, ladies and gentlemen. The motive, the method, and the complete absence of any possible alternative explanation. That is what you are here to evaluate today. I wonder if you have any idea how much trouble you're in, John, selling that gun. How much did you make? 400 quid? Peanuts. These days, the law takes a very dim view of trafficking illegal weapons. I reckon you could be doing years with your record. Years and years. So? I can help you get out of it. You know that bit of bother you had with the drugs thing? You had a brief from a firm in Dean's Court. So what? Did you ever meet a man called William Travers? No. Are you sure about that? I don't know what you're talking about. OK. I'm talking about this man here. William Travers. You have told the police that you saw that Martin Newell had a portable computer with him. Yes, I saw the case. It was on the side. It was beside the table. Was this the case that you saw? Yes, it was a case like that. If I place the computer in the case... Miss Sun Young, can you see the computer now? No. But it's the same case. It's the same computer. How could you have seen it in the hotel room? I was sure I saw it. It was sticking out. Sticking out? Thank you, Miss Sun Young. I've never seen him before. That night on the docks in Felix, though. I told you, I didn't see his face. Whoever took the gun, he was too far away. If I knew who it was, I would tell you. That's exactly the point I was going to make. If you could help me, I could help you. For instance, if you were able to identify the man in the hood, I could get a nice little brown envelope to the judge. And when it came to sentencing you, you might not even go inside. But I told you I didn't see... Oh, well, John, well, let me stop you there, mate. Let me tell you about this man here. His name is William Travers. He's a smart-ass liar. He makes a mint out of people like you. He's rich, he's smug, he's good with words, you know the type. But let me tell you something else about Mr. William Travers. He was the man who bought the gun. He killed Philip Spall. How do you know that? I just do, trust me. The thing is, I can't get close to him. What he does for a living, who he is, who's gonna believe me? See, that's what the law does. They protect their own. People like you, they just chew up and spit out without a second thought. He's going to get away with murder, literally. What are you saying? Just imagine that you got the cash, you got the gun. But then 
he decided to follow him back to his car. He'd been careless, he'd only parked around the corner. You've seen his car, you've seen his number plate, and you've clocked his face. Yeah? All you'd have to do is identify him from a lineup, then we'd have him. But you showed me his picture. Oh, I don't remember doing that. In fact, I haven't even been round here today. You didn't tell anyone I was coming, did you? No. Oh, well, I certainly didn't. You want me to lie? Listen, John, you bought a gun and you sold a gun that was used to kill someone. Think about it. How do I know I can trust you? <laughs> You're just asking stupid questions. Just come in tomorrow and we can change your statement. What time? I'm there all day. Wambourne. Yes, sir. Any movement on Spore? I expect to make an arrest. Really? Any time soon? Tomorrow. Good, then I shall look forward to hearing about it, if you bother to tell me. Yes, sir. With your lordship's leave, the defence call Martin Newell. Who started the affair? Was it you or her? I don't know, really. It just sort of happened. She was very young. Yes, I know. And I'm ashamed about that, but um, that was part of the attraction, you see. I was flattered. I'd like you to go back to the moment that you and Lucy Wilson entered the room. What happened then? Well, we closed the door behind us. I got a bottle of champagne from the minibar. Lucy was, was just seemed very excited. Then we, we fell onto the bed. She got undressed. You have to take that off me. No, no, she asked me to undress her. But did you take off her stockings? Yes. Yes, that's when I handled them. I, I... I took them off with my hands. And so the stockings that would later be used to strangle Lucy Wilson were already carrying your DNA. Don't say a fucking word. Mr Forbes Watson. You showed the receptionist the fried food you had bought at a local diner. In the lift, you asked someone the time. You seem to have been very keen to let as many people as possible know that you'd left the hotel. No. It wasn't like that. I, I was happy. Uh, I, I wasn't really thinking. By your own admission, the time when you came out of the lift was 8.40. Excuse me, have you got the time, please? 8.40. That was a Mr. John Lerner. A businessman from Detroit. Yes. And yet we have you on closed-circuit television, leaving the fast-food restaurant on Edbourne Street at 8.17. How many minutes would you say it took you to get back to the Avenue Hotel? I can't really say. You were carrying hot food. You wouldn't have dawdled. The distance is less than 500 metres. Would five minutes be fair? Yes, I suppose so. If you took 10 minutes, Mr. Newell, you would still arrive back at 8.27, leaving 13 minutes unaccounted for. What did you do in that time? I didn't dawdle. I don't know what I did in that time. Lerner must have given me the wrong time. Do you know Mr. Lerner's business? No. He is a sales manager. He works for Rolex. Will. Jeremy. How are you feeling? Fine. Not letting the pressure get to you now that you're back in the big time. It's that awful moment, isn't it, when you begin to wonder if you can believe a word your client said. And round the corner you can feel the breakdown. What breakdown? The breakdown of your case. Take care.
आगे What are you doing? You're going somewhere. Yeah. Oh, doing lighting, eh? I'm leaving you. What? You were me, Mark. I'm going. What, because of a little domestic tip? Is that what you call it? You're violent to me. You've been violent to me for years now, and I can't go on living in fear. I said I was sorry. Sorry's not enough. You can't do this to me. You can't do this to anyone. It's against the law. Have you been talking to someone? I've made up my mind. Where are you going? Your mum's? You lasted three weeks before you came crawling back last time. I'll never crawl to you again. Despite you what you've come oh i've heard it all before this is different i've got someone else to think about now i got claire where is she upstairs asleep i'm gonna get her now you're not taking her i'm not leaving her with you your mother is an alcoholic that house is disgusting you're not taking my kid to live with her you think i'd leave her with you how long do you think it would be before you started taking it out on her i've never laid a finger on her you punched me while she was in my stomach she was a month premature you're a horrible vile bully mark i never want to see you again You're not taking my kid. You leave me alone, You Mark. can piss off, but you're not taking my baby. You're not touching her. Watch me. <laughs> no! <laughs> Mark! Did you push him? No. I don't think so. <sighs> if you'd known him when I first met him, he was a very different man. A very kind man. I'm sure. <sighs> People change. It's only to be expected doing what he was doing every day. Oh, did he ever talk about his work? Do you know where he was today? Did he ever tell you what he was doing? He never told me anything. <laughs> so the best, really. I don't want to know. Mr. Khan, you work for the magazine Citywide. Yes. Could you please tell the court about your relationship with Lucy Wilson? I hired her to spy on Martin Newell and various directors at Kestrel Oil Trading. And what was your interest in Kestrel? I believe they were engaged in an illegal operation, dumping toxic waste in Eritrea. They were making millions from it, but at the expense of many human lives. Could I have silence, please? Otherwise, I will have to clear the public gallery. Mr. Travers, did Lucy Wilson find any evidence of this? Yes, a name, Agadir, and three dates. January the 13th, April the 5th, and July the 10th. Yes. The jury have heard details taken from Miss Wilson's mobile phone. Do those dates and that name mean something to you? Yes, it does. Due to information I've recently received from the Nautical Records Office, I've been able to identify the Agadir as a ship chartered by the Kestrel Group, which visited the port of Massawa in Eritrea on January 13th, April 5th, and July 10th. Tell me, Mr. Khan, what do you think this information might be worth? For Kestrel, well, it's everything. It's a huge scandal, and it may bring them down. And if Lucy Wilson had that information, do you think that could put her life in danger? Undoubtedly. My lord, th that's completely outrageous. Mr. Travers, forgive me, your lordship. It was an inappropriate question. I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. A broken neck. She didn't mean to do it, as far as I can tell. It was an accident. Accident? She pushed him down the bloody stairs! She pushed him? Or he fell? <sighs> I 
you know, if Wenbone could see this now, he'd be laughing about it. He probably is laughing about it, whatever he is. Now, where's Mrs. Wenbone? Oh, in shock. So she had a lot of bruises. I know you didn't like Wenbone, and you're probably glad that he's gone, but I'm not having that sort of muck spread around. Actually, sir, I was coming round to his way of seeing things. Like he said, he got results. So what about Spall? He told me yesterday he was about to make an arrest. What do you know about that? I don't know anything, sir. He didn't tell me. I know, but you must know something. I mean, you must know where he'd been, who he'd been talking to. Go and bring me his notes. He didn't do any, sir. He must have done something. Oh. Right. I want you to go through his diary, his desk and his dustbin. Just go through everything. He was onto something or somebody. I want to know who. OK, sir. The three pillars of the prosecution. First, that Martin Newell was in the room at the Avenue Hotel on the night that Lucy Wilson was killed. Yes, it's true. But even the prosecution agree that he was absent from that room for at least 20 minutes. Second, the DNA on Lucy's stockings. Well, you've heard a perfectly simple explanation as to how that got there. And thirdly, the motive. Now, was Lucy Wilson really interested in petty blackmail? No, after all, she was investigating Kestrel Oil, and the information she obtained for Citywide magazine could well be enough to bring Kestrel down. Suppose someone was onto her. Suppose she'd argued with someone who came to the room that night. What do you think they might have done to her? Crown began by saying that this case could not have been more straightforward. I would suggest to you that actually it was anything but. He's been living here in Suffolk, and now someone's shot him. If I'd known it was going to help this much, I'd have shot him myself. He was a killer, and he was killed. There's a certain justice to that. Have you reached a verdict? We have. Defendant, please stand up. It wasn't unanimous, <laughs> but who cares? We won. <laughs> it was a great victory. Oh, to Will, a great barrister and a loyal friend. Yeah. Well what next? I thought about coming back to London. You should. You're wasted in Ipswich. Mm. Even if they may be more tolerant of the way you work. Mm. <laughs> we got there, you know. We well, certainly did. Because I just couldn't throw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, didn't you know? Martin and Will met at university. They're in the same cricket team. Oh. Will was the opening batsman. Martin was their secret weapon. Yeah. The unbeatable left-handed bowler. <laughs> <laughs> deadly, I was deadly.
Martin was their secret weapon. The unbeatable left-handed bowler. We did manage to find you on the CCTV. Problem with the time. You're sure it was 8.40 when you got back? Did you go anywhere else on the way back? 13 minutes unaccounted for. What did you do in that time? I didn't dawdle. Martin wanted things I couldn't give him, and so we divorced. She was young, yeah. I was very flattered. It was just a man thing, wasn't it? It was just sex. And what's sex at the end of the day? It's just a game. <laughs> Startled me. What the hell are you doing? You lied to me. What are you talking about? You were lying all along. You killed Lucy Wilson. No, I didn't. I know it all, Martin. Now, Lucy was half your age. And she wasn't having an affair with you. She was using you so she could find out information about Kestrel. I think we're being watched. She didn't really say that, did she? I think we're being watched. You just made that up. You went to the hotel and you had sex with her. And then she sent you out to fetch a highly improbable meal from an American diner. Not the five-star room service. Why? So she could get you out of the way to access your computer, which is what she wanted all along. Because she wanted the information from Kessel. We all know that. Somehow, she got hold of your password and use it to access your computer, looking for information on the shipments to Eritrea. Well, that wasn't what she found, was it? You know, it's the one thing that I haven't been able to square all along. You told me that you weren't meant to carry the important information on your computer. That was company policy. So why would anyone target you in the first place? Why would anyone Think it worth killing Lucy Wilson just for a few contacts or whatever. You did it very cleverly, Martin. The way you built in the sense of conspiracy, the I think we're being watched. And it wasn't Kestrel. It was you that broke into my flat, wasn't it? They had no real reason to, but you did. You wanted me to think it was them. And Lucy never found out anything about the Agadir or the dates that it docked in East Africa. You told me that you had no idea what Kestrel were up to. Well, that wasn't true either, was it? Somehow you had found out. But that information wasn't on your computer. So when Lucy sent you out to fetch the takeaway and accessed your system, she found something else, something entirely different. You came back from the diner, not at 8.40, but 20 minutes earlier. What are you doing? You filthy bastard. These are children. Lucy. These are sick. This is what you were thinking about when you were in bed with me. They're just pictures. No, they're, they're not just pictures. They're little girls. It's horrible. Oh, I'm leaving. I, I can't bear to be in any near you. Thought we were... Oh, you, you thought what? You, you thought I fancied you? No, I, I don't. I'm here because of Kestrel. I'm being paid to find out what they're doing. And, and as for you, oh, you just make me feel sick. Well, I'm going to get you too. I'm going to tell the police. I'm going to tell everyone. I can't believe that in the end it all boiled down to something so shabby, so pathetic. 
as a middle-aged man with child pornography on their computer. But that wasn't the end of it. The computer was still there. You knew you were going to have to get rid of that. And that's when you came up with your big idea. You tapped the name Agadir and the three dates into Lucy's mobile phone. You were going to use the Kestrel conspiracy in order to cover up your own grubby tracks. And that was why it would seem she died. The river was only a few minutes walk away. You went down there, dumped the computer, and headed back to the hotel. Now, the first time you'd gone out, nobody had noticed you. But this time, you made absolutely sure that you were seen. Curly fries. You even asked another guest the time. Excuse me, have you got the time? Uh, yeah, um, 840. Oldest trick in the book, establishing an alibi. He went up to the room. The computer was gone. Lucy was dead. Everything was set. All you needed was someone to believe in you. And you chose me. Now, this is, of course, all speculation. Uh, no. Not really. That from the bottom of the Thames, did you? A dredger. Doubt it works. You want me to power it up? No. Let's not bother. Gemma refused to tell me why she divorced you. She would only say that she couldn't give you what you wanted. Oh, I think I know what she meant. Yeah, you're right, of course. Ah. No point denying any of that. So, what happens now, hmm? Does policeman jump out from behind a parked car and arrest me? <laughs> See, I, I don't have great knowledge of criminal law, but I'm pretty certain that you haven't got enough firm evidence to order a retrial. You could do me for the pictures, I suppose. Although... I have a feeling you're trying to pull the wool over my eyes on that one. I'm not sure that computer is going to be any good at all now. Anyway, if there are any images on it, you could put them on afterwards. Or after it was stolen from the hotel. So, yes, I am very impressed, well, as ever. But by and large, I'd have to say, you're screwed. See? You have one big problem. It's the same up at the university. Is that you always believe the best in people. You're too easily taken in. Not, I would have to say, the best quality in a criminal barrister. I can't defend someone if I don't believe them. There's your mistake. So what does happen now, hmm? I'll tell you what happens now. I'll get into my car and I'll drive away. And you and I are going to lead separate lives. I can't let that happen. Well, how are you gonna stop me, Will?
I'll call you later, all right? Ah, uh, I've made tea. Do you fancy one? Mm, thanks. What was that on the phone? That was Kate. She's not too happy. <laughs> she was the one who wanted us to go back. Yeah, not if it meant kicking her out. Now she's going to have to move into student digs like everyone else. Oh, she could always come and live with us, can she? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Thank you. So how about you, Will? Back in your old chambers. That must feel strange. Mm, yes, well, it does a little anyway. But they seem pleased enough to have me back. I'm not surprised. You're always their star. And they've given you a new case. Well, I, I saw the package on your desk, pink ribbons and all. Yes. So, what is it? It's a murder case. Oh. No surprise there either. You're good at murder. Tell me we're going to be all right. We're going to be just fine. I've read the police statement, the witness statements, and this is your own statement here, and I have to say that the prosecution do seem to have a very solid case. However, at the same time, there is some room for doubt. And doubt, of course, is where every defence begins. So I am prepared to accept your instructions and represent you. But there is one question I must ask you before we begin. Have you told me the truth? 